Hi, this is John the Rosenhead, Jerusalem Psychotherapist. This week's Torah Psychology post with Pastor Ta'azinu is going to discuss humility. In this week's pastor, we have the Shira that Moshe Rabbeinu says to the Bnei Yisrael. And in this Shira, the song, there's a pasuk which says, Ya'arov kemata likhi, that my teaching will drop like rain. And Rashi explains this connection and says that just as Torah is the source of life for the world, this is like rain, which rain being the source of life for the world. And the Gemara in Talmud also makes a comparison between water and Torah and says that water flows down to a lowly place and is stored at a lowly place. So too Torah flows down and is only able to be received and stored by a lowly person, someone that is, that is humble. So we can take these two ideas and say that Torah and the bracha of Torah will flow down like rain, will drop down like rain, but it will only be able to be able, we can only receive this bracha and store this bracha if we are, if we are humble and we develop humility. So let's look at this from a psychological perspective. So, humility as a, as a psychological characteristic, it only really started to, be, to gain recognition with the development of the positive psychology movement that started to look at positive characteristics, psychological characteristics involved in, in healthy functioning and looking at skills that a person has in order to, to, to live and function in a healthy way. But even still, there was a, it was a slow development, a slow, a slow progress in the research because in order to research something, you need to be able to define it, to, to, to define your terms, and, to, and it has to be measurable. And humility is a bit ambiguous in order to define it because it can be difficult to say whether it's positive or negative. For some, in some situations, or for some people, perhaps if we say that there's humility, there could be this impression that it's actually just low confidence or low self-esteem and someone's self-depreciation. They're not, they're not recognizing who they are and they're, they're bringing themselves down unnecessarily. Or perhaps in a perverse way, we could say it's the opposite. If someone says they are humble, it's actually displaying arrogance. So it could be difficult to gain a clear, a clear picture from the research because we get this ambiguous, ambiguous impression due to the difficulty of defining humility and also from a, in, in terms of measuring. It can be difficult because it's context dependent. Perhaps in certain situations it's positive and in certain situations it's negative. If you're a manager or a CEO, if you're overly humble, it can be detrimental to the functioning of your business. But in an unhealthy relationship, if you're overly humble, that can be negative. And you, need to sh- you, don't, you don't want to be showing humility in that situation. So the researchers tried to capture the idea of humility by being trying to come up with a bit a slightly more robust way of, of viewing it and defining it. And there are at least three ways, three major, three significant central components to, humi- to humility. One is being able to have an accurate self-perception, understanding exactly who you are. Secondly, is a humble way of portraying yourself. And thirdly, is when you're in, relation, in a re- relational, relational sense, there's an other focused relational perspective, meaning that when you're in relationships, you're not just focused on yourself, but that you're focused on the other person. So these three factors taken together is what can be seen as the ingredients for humility, and it leads a person to be engaged in a process and to embrace constant self-correction and self-improvement. And when you take this together, when you see the results in the hum- from the research in humility, we see that it leads to healthier cognitive functioning, so you're better at being a, a problem, better at problem solving, and you have quicker learning. It also leads to healthier emotional and physical health as well. So we see that humility is a very positive psychological characteristic, and this is backed up in the research with, its, with the way that it, that it is conducting the research to be able to capture the components of humility. So how does a person develop and foster humility? So there's a different ways. One at least is to be able to recognize and identify your strengths and weaknesses. And it's not just to identify your strengths and weaknesses, but to take ownership over them, which means that you understand how they impact on your life, how they are, how they are expressed, and to understand how to use your strengths and weaknesses or to alter and change and to correct your strengths and weaknesses depending on, on the situation as well. So it's really taking ownership over them. Secondly, is also being aware that you're part of a bigger picture. It's not you on your islands, that you're part of a bigger picture, that you're part of a family, part of a system, part of a community with neighbors and part of the world as well. And this bigger picture will also will instill this idea of humility. And thirdly, it's also being able to understand that to take a, a view of curiosity about the world, to be prepared to learn and to take feedback from, from a person as well, to have curiosity about the world that you're living in and the, and the curiosity about yourself and how you interact within this world. And I think if we take this idea and we look at Torah as a bracha that will flow down like rain, 
which involves humility. We can understand how Torah is synonymous with humility. And then, because Torah provides these factors, Torah provides us with this understanding of ourself, an internal introspection of who we are, what we are, and what are our qualities. Torah is, provides us with this understanding that we are part of a bigger picture, a connection with a kehillah, with a community, with, with a Kaddish Baruch, a relationship. And this creates an idea that we are, we are part of something bigger. And also Torah quite literally is learning, teaching. The Torah provides us with a way to constantly be learning, to, take, to have a curious view of our world, to constantly want to learn new things. So therefore, if we learn Torah, and if we, which, which, when as, as long, and we try to develop this characteristic of humility, we'll be able to collect more rain, and we'll be able to develop and receive as much bracha as possible. Have a great Shabbos, and keep well.